Hi there. My name is Nathan Weeks, and I'm an automation engineer with Faber Industrial Technologies. Today I'm going to go through the process of showing you how to set up a SICK CLV630 barcode scanner, integrating it into an EtherCAD network controlled by the Parker Automation Controller, or PAC, and using the barcode scanner to change recipes in an HMI touchscreen. Let's get started. The first step that must be done is properly setting up the scanner. In order for the scanner that we've chosen to work properly with the pack, it requires us to use a CDF 600-0300, which is a field bus module from SICK that allows the CLV600 series barcode scanners to work properly in the EtherCAT network. We'll also be using a magnetic proximity sensor to trigger the barcode scanner. Both the barcode scanner and the magnetic proximity sensor will need to be wired into the EtherCAT module using the proper cables and then the field bus module will in turn need to be wired into connector X1 on the pack. Since we'll be using the EtherCAT network, we're going to be leaving the rotary switches on the top of the field bus module all set to zero. The barcode scanner and then in turn will then be configured directly in a computer using an ethernet connection. Once you've connected all that up, go ahead and power on the unit and open the SOPA software. Once SOPUS is open, it will be necessary to create a new set of search settings in order to locate the connected scanner. Once the software has located the attached scanner, go ahead and double click it. That will bring it over into the new project. Once it's been attached to the new project, Log in using the proper user level and password and double click on the box in order to open a configuration window. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will only be setting up what we need. In the quick start area, we will select the types of barcodes that we wish to monitor and respond to. In this case, that would be the code 39 family, UPC, 25 interleaved, and you code 128 family. As we went over earlier, we have a proximity sensor that we wish to use as a trigger for when we scan a barcode, and it's wired into input 1 on the field bus module. So in the object trigger control selection area, we'll select the start of the trigger that is external input 1, and we'd like to stop reading once we've gotten a good read from the barcode scanner. Next we'll set up the output control for the sensor, which will determine when and how the scanner will communicate the data is detected. Since we don't have anything else we need to do with this data, we'll select to send it as soon as possible once that good read has been made. Now we need to set up the logic around how to read the barcode. As you can see here, in output format 1, we'll be looking for either a good read or not a read. This is the simplest setup that you could have. Below in output format 2 is another option, where the data being sent out is bracketed on either end by a start and end data packet. But for this demo, we'll stick to output format 1. Now we need to tell the scanner how it is set up in the network. For this application, we need to make it a slave so that the pack can control what to do with the data. We'll select an immediate point of output and we'll set it up as a server as opposed to a multiplexer. For the field bus gateway, set the communication mode to CDF 600, no handshaking, and the output format to output format 1, which is the format that we created earlier. We also need to configure that external output that we're planning on using for the scanner trigger. For this application, we'll set the sensitivity to the edge and the logic to activate when the sensor goes high. Now that the barcode scanner is configured properly to work in the EtherCAT network, we'll save the parameters permanently in the barcode scanner and move over to the Parker Automation Controller for the rest of this demonstration. Once Parker Automation Manager starts up, we want to make a new project, a standard project, and give it a name.
for this demonstration, we're going to be just doing it in structured text. Make sure that the device that you have matches the device that's in this box. Once the device tree on the left is populated, double click on the device so that you can add your pack to the network. And it'll appear right there. Click OK. The next thing we want to do is we want to add our bar barcode scanner to the project. So we'll right click and scan for devices. I've already built one of these before, so if you've already configured a system and put in the proper files, it'll appear right there. I'm going to close this and show you how to add that in. So if that doesn't appear, you want to go up to Tools, and you've got to add the device to the device repository. And you'll go to Install, and you'll want to have the .xml file for your particular um, device. And make sure that you select the EtherCAT XML device description configuration file. If you ex select something else, it won't work properly. And so then once you do that, you can drill down and there will be this particular one. So you can close that. And then in order to add it, you add device. And you can either do the entire list or you can sort by vendors. And there's our device right there. Next, we'll want to double click on the newly added device and open up the EtherCAT I.O. mapping. In this situation, the barcode scanner will be sending over a 16-byte array of information, which is going to be stored in the channel CNF message in underscore 16 bytes. As you can see, it's labeled as, labeled as the data type array of so many bytes. Uh, in order to access the data in our program, we're going to give this array a name. We also want to change when this variable is updated so that we can actually see the information being exchanged. If we do a build real quick, then we can go online and we can see some of the information that's already going on in here. So this first byte's a heartbeat, and then the rest of the first five bytes of information are the header, and the next 11 are what we're interested in. These numbers right here represent the data coming from the barcode scanner that will tell us our string data. So now if we go over to the program here, I've already written a little bit of code to take in those 11 bytes of information and concatenate them into a string that we'll in turn send over to the HMI and we can read what that ends up saying. So once we've done all of our code there, I'll do a build, make sure there's no errors. Then we'll open the symbol configuration and we'll want to check the boxes for the variables that I'm sending over to the HMI. The pack has a neat built-in feature where it's got Interact Express built in. So we'll go to 192. 168.10.50 and that'll pull open the shell that's inside. I've already built up a, pro a project that'll consist of that program that I wrote. I'll say what this barcode is reading and the particular recipes that go along with it. And the recipes will also be displayed over here if they want to be loaded. Here's some of the recipes. Nothing difficult, just to display that it works. So 
So you want to make sure that you go online with the pack. So now, if I scan a barcode, I get a new recipe. This concludes the demonstration tutorial on how to properly set up a CLV630-0120 barcode scanner with a CDF600-0300 EtherCAT field bus module. Integrate it properly into an EtherCAT network, which is controlled by a Parker Pack controller, and in turn use the barcode scanner to change recipes and view the changes to the recipes in an Interact Express environment. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.